Well, hello, 6J. It's been a while. Hope you all have uh, been able to keep up with all the work. I know some of the work has been a little different from what we've done before. Some of you all think have actually enjoyed it. So, uh, got a couple of things I'd like to review with you since we're going to take a quiz tomorrow. And I wanted to make sure you had a good understanding of this material. So, let's take a look at a few things. First of all, uh, the quiz is tomorrow. It's going to be on 8182 and is one question on mean, median, and mode. We also are finishing up with our ACT Aspire this week. And most of you have done well. Um, I'd like to shout out to Lance. Lance has already finished all his lessons and got 20 out of 20s on all of them. So he's receiving 100 for his ACT Aspire. Uh, there's a couple of you that have not finished. Uh, number eight, still need to get Mays to finish eight. And Christian, I need you to finish nine. So if you could get in touch with me and I'll reopen that window so we can get that knocked out. And let's see, I think uh, a couple of things about the quiz. So it's going to be a 10 question quiz. It's going to be open book. So hopefully that uh, makes you feel a little better. We're looking for uh, some good scores. And uh, I'm going to give you a list of what to expect. So if you want to get out a sheet of paper real quick. And uh, we're going to go ahead and look at this example in a minute as well. Maybe you can jot a few notes down. So uh, first of all, there's going to be three questions on whether a statement is biased or fair. And you should have done several examples in these practice lessons in these notes that I've sent you. So three questions on whether a statement is fair or biased. Okay, I want to make one uh, note that, you know, when you see a statement with added adjectives in it to make it seem like it's a lot better or maybe it's even a lot worse, then usually that is a biased statement. So that might be a hint uh, to tell whether something's biased or fair. You're going to have, as I said, one question on mean, median, and mode. Uh, we worked on that yesterday. Just remember your mean is your average. Your median is going to be that number that is in the middle. And the mode is going to be the number that occurs the most. Okay. And um, we had some examples of that in the notes yesterday. So I think that should be self-explanatory. Uh, you're going to have four multiple choice questions on this quiz. So uh, you should be ready for that. And then finally, you're going to have three questions on finding animal population. I think if anything's going to give you trouble, it's probably going to be uh, this. So that's why I want to set up a little example and go over a few, few things with you all. So let's look at that. Okay, so I put an example up here of estimating animal population, and I put these two categories. Marked, counted, another word for mark, they use the word tagged, okay? And so if you write it down like this and then just kind of fill in the blanks, uh, I think it'll make it a lot easier for you. So you have mark counted and you have the total counted, okay? So there's a difference between what was marked or tagged and counted and what was the total Count because not all the animals are going to be tagged. Okay, and then the other side, the fraction is going to be the total number marked or tagged over uh, what the estimation for the population is, and that's usually going to be the variable. So <clears throat> if you look at this, here's a couple of reminders. Remember that the larger number is usually on the bottom. Okay, and so when we set up this fraction, if this number is smaller than this number, then you probably have them backwards. So take a good look at that. You're going to substitute whatever the given numbers are for each of these and just substitute it in. You're going to solve the problem by using cross products. We've done that several times this year. So we're going to take this numerator and multiply it by this denominator, which will usually be the numerator, which will be a number, times the denominator, which will usually be the variable. And we always put that on the left side. 
and then we have this denominator times this numerator, okay? And then we set up the equation, just like we've done, and then you solve the equation, which means you're solving for the variable. We just need to isolate the variable and get it by itself. So I'm going to erase uh, a couple of these notes, and then we're going to do an example. All right. Okay, so the example we're going to use is about rabbits. Okay, let's look at this statement. Uh, total rabbits counted is 5,804. So when I look up here, I look to see what was the total count. Well, that would be this denominator. So let's write that down. 5,804. Okay, and that's going to be our denominator. Now, we said this number should be larger than this number. So let's do the next statement. Marked rabbits counted. So that's going to be the marked or tag that are counted. And in this example, it's 3,214. 3,214. And again, that number is smaller on top than the number as the denominator. Okay, and then we're going to fill in the blanks for the other two. So we're looking for the total that are marked, uh, and that would be total marked rabbits would be 5,398. 5,398, and we're looking for the population, which will be the variable. So when we're using cross products, now these are obviously going to be very big numbers. We're looking at multiplying. 32,014 times X and 5,804 times 5,398, that's a lot of rabbits, is 31,329,000. And you should be doing this on your calculator so that you can keep up, make sure you know what numbers we're looking at. 992. And so we have to undo the, the variable. So in order to get the variable by itself, we're going to simply divide each side by 3,214. And that's going to leave us with a final answer of 9,748 rabbits. Okay, so that's how we do all of those problems. You're going to have three of those on the quiz, and they'll be very, very similar to that. Okay, so I would make sure you have these notes down, and you fill in the blanks, and then solve for the X. Hope this helped. Uh, we'll be seeing you soon. All right, y'all take care. Bye.